Number 11, Genesis 3:14. After Adam and Eve ate the forbidden tree, the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. First of all, serpents don't eat dust. Second of all, if one serpent made a mistake somehow, why should all the innocent newborn serpents crawl on their bellies too? Does that make sense to you? Is that your idea of God? Do you think God is a childish angry kid who cannot control his fury that he punishes newborn serpents for a sin that they didn't commit? What about number 16? To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Do you really think God hates all newborn innocent women and made them all suffer pain for a crime that they didn't commit? Do you really think we have an unfair God? Do you really think that God is full of hate towards one gender? Maybe this is why God chose to have a son, not a daughter. In other words, do you think God is sexist? Or does it make more sense to believe that God isn't and this book was written by a sexist person? Okay, next verse. But Satan caused them to slip and expelled them from the state in which they were. And we said, go you all down, some of you being the enemies of others, and on earth will be your dwelling place and provision for a time. What, I said? <laughs> I mean, you know, I was expecting now the rage, the anger, the violence, the jealousy. That's what I was expecting. Okay, they eat from the tree. Where's the rage, the violence? I'm going to punish you now. You're gonna sweat on earth, and you're gonna suffer, and you're gonna stub your toe, and you're gonna work, and you're gonna labor, and you're gonna die there for what you did. And where is the woman? All right? <laughs> and the woman. All right? She's the one who's gonna suffer the most, right? She'll have to suffer labor pains and monthly cycles, right? And bleeding and crying out when her children come into the world. She'll scream out. And worst of all, the greatest humiliation? The man will rule over her. <laughs> when he's obviously her intellectual inferior because she and the angels seduced, she and, she, she and Satan seduced him, and he just bumbled along and didn't commit a real, you know, wrong deed. <laughs> well, I don't mean to make light of it. But the story is obviously different though. You know, no, no threat here. As a matter of fact, look at the way it says, Oh Adam, dwell you and your spouse in the garden and eat freely thereof what you wish. But come down this, near this tree, for you will be among the wrongdoers. Then they make the mistake. But Satan caused them to slip and expelled them from the state in which they were. And we said, go all you down. Some of you being enemies of others will be adversaries of others. Some of you will be adversaries of each other. And on earth will be your dwelling place and provision for a time. This is not a deity losing it. If you look at it, I mean, on earth will be your dwelling place and provision for a time. That's not the words of a, of a God that has got lost, you know, that's really extremely upset. On earth will be your dwelling place and provision for a time. When I walked into the hotel today, and they said, uh, and it's this nice one up there, I don't know the name, of it. I can't remember the name of it, but that's a continental breakfast. And they said, uh, your room will be room uh, 111, and uh, there's a continent continental breakfast in the morning. I didn't say, <gasps> you know, I didn't think they were mad at me. You know, because they said, you know, you're going to sleep here, and this is going to be your provision in the morning. You know, oh, thank you. you know. <clears throat> but notice something else about this verse. I mean, when you read these verses for the first time, I don't know, maybe I'm nuts, and many people think I am, but when you read these verses for the first time, I mean, this is just so much that catches your attention. But Satan caused them to slip. I remember, I, I couldn't get that verse out of, that, those words out of my head. Satan caused them to slip, to slip? The greatest sin in the history of the human race, and it's called a slip? You know, in my culture, slip means, you know, you just, momentarily, for a fraction of a second, you lose your focus. It's not a big deal. My Uncle Bob used to always say to me, uh, Jeff, I'm sorry I'm five minutes late, I slipped up. You know, it's, the understanding is it's no big deal. It's just a slip. You know, that's what we say when we make a minor mistake. I slipped up. Don't worry about it. Never happen again. A slip, I said? 
momentary loss of focus? The greatest sin in the history of humanity? Why we're all here? Why we're all suffering? Why we experience death? A slip? I didn't believe it. I went to my Arabian friends at that time. I didn't know any Arabic. They came to this verse. We went through it line by line. I said, now don't change any words. Just read them one at a time. But Satan made them, and I said, okay, this one. This one right here. What does it mean? Tell me what that means. They looked at it. It says, uh, slip. <laughs> slip and expelled them from the state in which they were. A slip, I thought? But then maybe I was trying to force the traditional understanding, the traditional interpretation. Maybe it was just a slip. I mean, after all, they didn't commit murder. They didn't commit robbery, rape, pillaging, assault. They they a couple of pieces of fruit. Huh? It's not the greatest sin in the history of humanity by any means. And then the next verse says, and then they were expelled from the state in which they were. Well, what state were they? Let's see now. Let's go back from where we started. First, mankind is being taught. We see he's an intellectual being. Then we show he's a moral being. Moral being means he's a being that's going to have to make choices. And then God gives him this choice. It's not a huge deal. It's not the gravest sin in the history of humanity by any means. It's minor by any standards. They make it, though. We see that God originally intended to put man on earth as his vicegerent. We see a period of preparation where he's being prepared intellectually, where he's growing intellectually, where he's growing as a moral creature. When does God finally put him on earth? What signals that he's ready to begin? He makes his first independent choice. It's not the worst deed in the history of humanity. It's minor on anybody's scale, but it shows that mankind is ready to act on his own, to be his own, to make his own choices. But God has empowered him to make choices, and he's ready to make them and carry them out see them most often to their expected ends, if God wills. <clears throat> and that seems to be the only real significance of it. But I thought, maybe I'm getting this wrong. Maybe God just blows off into an angry rampage the next verse. So I look at the next one and it says, and then Adam received words from his Lord. And he turned, and God turned to him mercifully. For he's off returning, ever merciful. Well, if I had any doubts up till now that God is not enraged by what this has happened, that God hasn't prepared mankind for this choice, for what was eventually going to happen. That all this was preparation for mankind to begin his earthly sojourn in this famous allegory. If I had any doubts before now, I had them, certainly didn't have them after reading this verse. This verse is entirely consoling, reaching and merciful, reaching out to mankind in mercy. Mankind goes to earth. He's obviously afraid. He obviously feels remorse. He's in an unfamiliar environment. And what does God do? He turns to him. <coughs> He turns to him. In Arabic, the word is like, has the meaning of like a father turning towards an infant or a child or somebody or a parent, a mother turning towards her child. And he turns to him mercifully, and he for God is off returning, ever merciful. And Adam receives words from his Lord. What kind of words? Probably words of consolation, words of hope, words to tell him not, not to be scared. And in the next verse, we see those are exactly the type of words that Adam receives. He says, go down, Adam and his spouse, go down from the state, all of you together, Repeating that again, just so that we know that this is not a punishment here. Go down from the state, all of you together, and truly there will come to you guidance from me. And whoever follows my guidance has nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. It is, a, it is an emotional picture. This young couple, young couple, is here you know, in, f in fear, in, in shame, feeling remorse. And God reaches out to them and turns towards them and tells them, you have nothing to fear, nor shall you grieve. I know this is tough for you but you've been prepared for it up, to, all, up till now, for your entire existence. It had to happen. This is a necessary stage in your development, in your growth, but just hang in there. Follow my guidance. Be true to me, and I'll be true to you. I'll guide you. I'll help you. I'll do whatever you need. Just follow my guidance, and you have nothing to fear, nor shall you grieve. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so I was impressed. You know, I thought this author, whom I didn't know, I thought was extremely brilliant. Because the story is entirely coherent, but it's bringing out entirely new meaning. Number 23, Deuteronomy 25, 11 to 12. If two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Sisters in humanity, don't defend your husband or they will cut off your hand. Seems like whoever wrote this verse had a problem with women kicking him in the crouch. Do you still believe these are words of God? 
Do you really believe in a God that tells you that if you defend your husband who is getting attacked, they should cut your hand? A God that hates snakes apparently and makes them eat dust. A God that hates women and punishes all of them by labor pain for a sin that they didn't commit. A God that hates women so much he decided to have a son, not a daughter. And then got angry and decided to kill his own son because he lost hope in us following some simple laws. Oh, you can't stop eating pigs? Okay, no problem. I will just kill my son so you can eat as much pig as you want. Really? 